Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. I'm going to go all the way back to 1987. How many people here were born in 1987? I'm going to talk to you about something that almost cost me my job. This is sacrilege, okay? So this is the way we used to put car doors together at Ford Motor Company in 1987. And I thought, gee, I don't, I don't know, that doesn't seem right. And so I suggested this. This is a door module. It was resoundedly rejected because after all, the guys on the line can figure it out. They don't need to be, they don't need to be, have any helpful hints or, or anything that makes it easier. After all, the union and management, I mean, they're, they're at war continuously. So look at this. That's what I looked like in 1987. And guess what? Guess what? It was rejected even though the guy right here was the vice president and he thought it was a good idea. But a lot of other guys like uh, these here, but let's, let's just move on. We don't want you to talk about let's, let's talk about what we got here. What this is doing is showing that this idea saved us a tremendous amount of money. But we didn't do it at Ford. We didn't do it because it was different. So let's look at something that we are looking at now, which is coming from Tesla. This is the new DAR module. We, you know, we, uh, we had a little fun. We smashed the glass and stuff like that. But now what we're going to do is we're going to have some serious time. And we're going to talk a little bit about what Tesla's done with their DAR module. So let's have a look. So you start out right here with the, uh, what we call the substrate, the plastic substrate. And you can see that all of the, all the little connectors and whatnot, they can all snap right in. That's, uh, that's kind of a cool idea. Saves the operator a whole bunch of time. Besides, this is made offline. This isn't made here at the door. It's made somewhere else and then brought in and fastened down. Another good thing that we found was, see how they whisk out? They thin out the, uh, the areas where there doesn't have to be as much strength. That's a great way for, uh, for reducing the amount of cost associated with the plastic components. So you can see here that uh, the speaker can be mounted in. Now this has got four screws. Personally, I would have done a clock and lock to make it work. As you can see, here's the, uh, the motor with, uh, with a bell crank that's inside that will raise the, uh, raise the glass up and down. And then right here is a, a special little feature. This is called the pressure sensor. And uh, this pressure sensor is going to kick in if you get a side impact. We'll show you the intrusion beam in a second. But if there's a side impact, this is going to sense the pressure differential as it's squashing shut. And when that happens, this will interact with all the rest of the components associated with um, the crash result. And this is going to make a, uh, it'll be the, the, the kickoff, it'll be the starter for side intrusion. What we should actually talk a little bit about too is that this is what we call a headerless door. Um, it, means that, it means that there's no uh, metal surrounding the outside edge. The door itself is made out of uh, aluminum and uh, some people have asked, how do you know the difference between the steel and aluminum? This is a magnet. Magnets stick to metal like, uh, or sorry, they stick to ferrous things like steel. but they don't, uh, they don't stick to aluminum. So that's one quick way. We also have a little gun. We pull the trigger and that tells us not only that it's aluminum, it tells us what type of aluminum it is. So these, there's various different tricks we have for, uh, for determining what the materials are. But let's look inside here to see what else we got going on. So the door module, kind of, we're going to slide it out and put it here. The door module on the reverse side is kind of like a, a little bit of a work to behold. The, the idea behind all of the regulation motion, the regulator motion, which brings the glass up and down, is kind of like formulated through these two, what we used to call pucks, but now we call stirrups. And what's nice about these is they have a self-compensating spring. I don't know if we can get in there, but there's a spring in here that, uh, that, uh, that compensates as the glass is going up and down to make sure that 
it holds it in steady and it, it doesn't rattle when you, uh, when you bring the windows up and down. Now here, uh, on these two guides, this is what uh, brings the glass up and down is on these guides. These ones are separate pieces of metal, but with uh, Hyundai and Kia, these are actually molded into the, uh, into the plastic, and so that uh, could help out. Now, this is made by Broza. Uh, Broza makes, uh, makes a lot of different things, but maybe, uh, maybe Broza might want to talk um, to Tesla about maybe redesigning this so that this is in a separate unit, just same sort of plastic with some grease and stuff inside. So let's look on the inside here. And kind of the most prominent thing is this big monster W uh, bracket right here. That's the intrusion beam. The intrusion beam is uh, made to protect you as a bumper is coming in your side door. We also have the other one here. We have a doubler that goes up in, in the back here. Um, that's called the belt, line, uh, the belt line reinforcement. So what we've got is a whole bunch of things to try and keep you from uh, getting into trouble. One of the other things that we noticed is, let me get over here a little bit, is um, the cast brackets. Oops, sorry, wrong end. You can see them down here. One there and one at the other end. Those cast brackets, um, uh, usually what we see is they're made out of, uh, they're made out of stamped steel, but uh, in this case they've gone with, uh, with uh, die casting. So to put this together, um, they're using thread forming screws. You can, um, you can see right here where they, they went in place. They hold the, uh, they hold the uh, door module on. And the design that I did in 1987, it, it had screws, but it also, it, but only on one end. The other end um, had something we called uh, uh, a hook design, hook and screw. So when we put it in, there was hooks that would hold it in place. And then we just buttoned the screws up at the bottom because as you moved in, it moved into a jamming uh, kind, of, uh, kind of operation which held it in place and you didn't need the extra screws. So you could probably, with the old fashioned design that we came up with, you could probably eliminate um, at least six screws by, by doing the other one. Anyway, this is a good idea. Um, not everybody uses door modules. I think uh, FCA and um, as I mentioned, Hyundai and um, and Kia and BMW. So they're probably, the, uh, they're probably the, the guys that use the most. Most other people are still doing it. Uh, basically, you fish the components in and then screw them in from the backside. It's kind of uh, difficult for the operators. This is a good idea. I'd like to thank you all for, uh, for tuning in. Make sure you tip those uh, cashiers. And have yourself a great day. Thanks very much.